Hello everyone. Uh, today I'll be talking about mask sensitive data in logs with Logstash. I am Ayush. I work at AppSecOizer, DevSecOps engineer. So let's begin. Uh, what shall we be covering today? So we'll talk about what is sensitive information. We'll talk about the problem statement that we had in hand and the solution that we came up with along with the demonstration. And uh, we'll conclude the talk with the, the impact of the solution that we had and the probable questions that you guys might have uh, while during, during the uh, this session, right? So what is sensitive information? The obvious thing that comes to mind when we talk about sensitive information are passwords and credentials, right? And that's perfectly fine and that's true as well. But uh, what we need to like think of, uh, it's, it's actually context dependent as well. So other information such as PII or any other uh, field or some some kind of information about the end users could also be considered sensitive based on the context let's say for example a company could consider someone's phone number which is a pia essentially uh, to be sensitive right and it's context dependent depending upon a law to follow maybe a regulation that the company has internally and so, so on and so forth right so we could have a bunch of like things that we can consider sensitive information based on context so what was the problem statement the problem statement that our client, which is a B2C internet unicorn, uh, had is that we they had some they had uh, had an old application that they had been working on for a really long time, and it was already logging some PII information, right? And uh, the developers had access to those logs because obviously they need it for debugging and like so on and so forth development and stuff, right? So the uh, the I, uh, the issue that they came up to us with was the fact that they wanted to remove these PIIs from the logs, right? And why do they want to remove the PIIs? Because I mean, obviously, right? The developers do not really necessarily need the exact information about the end users and the clients that this com this uh, company had or the client had. And uh, I mean, it's actually privileged information as well. So the developers need access to the logs, but not necessarily the in exact information about the entities, right? So yeah, and this was in production. So this is not just staging data. This is like actual production stuff. So they, we didn't really want to uh, them to have the developers to have access to stuff from the production database about the clients. So what we came up with is that we'll perform data masking about in the logs. And uh, how will we do this is with Logstash. Now Logstash is a component of the popular data ingestion uh, system uh, ELK, which is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And Logstash essentially uh, is uh, configured by, with like three uh, three segments, which is input, filter, and output. Input being the different segments that uh, send logs to Logstash, and output being the output uh, source that Logstash emits to. It could be Elasticsearch or it could be the terminal console as well, and a bunch of other things. The interesting bit is the filter part, and that's the where we wrote the config for, which uh, selectively figured out which fields to mask. Uh, if they existed in the first place in the log entry that we're talking about, and then mask that particular kind of data, right? So this is the log stash configuration that, uh, I mean, I've written for this purpose of this talk, this is like a POC thing. So we uh, have a source, right? A log entry essentially, and uh, it's a stringified JSON essentially when it comes to log stash. So we first convert it to, uh, to uh, other entities or like fields in the log stash entry which is passed json2 and 3 i've done this twice essentially because I, I i wanted to mask it once for you to see the difference between when it's masked and not masked right so this is the configuration i'll quickly walk you guys through a demonstration of the whole setup so this is the same configuration that i just sh uh, showed you guys in the slides uh we'll quickly move on to the logstash thing so logstash is currently running and waiting for logs to be sent to logstash right and this is the file beat config. File beat is the way that we'll be sending the logs to Logstash. And this is the particular file. If you see the path, right? And we'll just start file beat now. And lastly, I will go to the file and start adding logs. So here are the two log entries that we'll talk about. The both the log entries have a are JSON essentially, and uh, they have a key called message. And the message contains another stringified JSON at this point, right? The first log is perfectly fine. It has a normal data key, normal data value, which we do not really consider sensitive. And hence, ideally, we would not want to mask it, right? And the second uh, is the log that we consider to have some sensitive information. That's a PII, right? So this particular key, if this exists, we, it is what we want to mask in, in our setup with the configuration that we have. So yeah, 
I will just save this and it should show up on lock stash fairly quickly. Yeah, there it is. Let me scroll to the first one. Yeah. So if you can see the, this is the, the message essentially contains the entire log entry as another stringified JSON. That's how log stash works. So first I need to convert this into an actual JSON entity, which I do in parse JSON, which you can see here, right? It's message and then the stringified actual value that was inside it in the log as the log was in the file. Then I convert it to JSONs again, uh, which is under past JSON two and three here. But both of these are uh, identical, right? Because you see the same keys and the same values and unmasked plain text values here in this particular case, because as per our condition, we didn't really uh, need to mask this, right? Uh, our condition specifies a very specifically to mask the data for. So yeah, let me just scroll down to the next one. Okay, so here we have the other entry again, same stuff. We have the JSONified entry, we convert it to a parsed JSON thing, and then we convert it to a parsed JSON two and three, right? So if you can see the parsed JSON two, because we're not performing any kind of masking for it, it has the plain text value, right? Uh, along with the key. Whereas in parsed JSON three, the data is masked. Uh, we, I've just replaced, I essentially just replaced the value with something that I just came up with, a bunch of stars and masked data, right? So the log structure remains the same, right? I mean, I obviously will need to remove the message part because that still contains that value, but uh, the idea is that it's masked right now, right? So I can remove the fields that I do not want in this particular log. This is just the default version of the output of the log. So the data is masked at this point, and then we can continue on. And this is the log entry that the developers would see when we send it to them, right? Not the source entry at this point. So, yeah. I will go to the next slide. So this is the end result that we talked about and we saw in the video as well that uh, when we didn't mask for it, this is essentially the unmasked data which would have been like uh, in the developer's hand if we hadn't masked it. And this is what essentially they have access to at this point right now after we have masked the data, cool. So coming to the impact of the solution, right? The, I mean, the first and foremost thing that we like we're happy about that the fact was that the developers didn't really need to refactor anything we were able to solve for like privacy essentially uh without them having to do any additional work on top of it right we just configured the it, like the off side of uh, things that the logs come to log stash essentially and we do the data masking there and then we uh, send it to Elasticsearch plus kibana and kibana is where they'll have a ui to look at the logs right the developers so they essentially got cut off from the source logs. The next point being, can we extend it to other applications in the ecosystem? So uh, now depending upon the other uh, different kinds of application, different entities could be considered, uh, let's say sensitive, right? As we talked about in the first few slides. So again, uh, for the same thing, uh, now that we have a POC configuration and we have the ability to like, check for specific entities that we want to mask for, not blindly mask any and everything, right? So, uh, and it's fairly simple as well. It's not some regex matching or something else, right? So this was easily extendable to other applications in their ecosystem as well. And the biggest plus being that the developers were enabled to do their jobs while the problem was solved without us ever being a blocker for them. So they were able to continue to do their work. We were able to solve for security and privacy and nobody was unhappy or was being blocked to from like being able to achieve their goals and work, right? So coming to some probable questions. Uh, one of the, I mean, like obvious question would be why would we log sensitive information in the first place, right? Uh, I mean, uh, in an ideal case, yes, we definitely shouldn't log sensitive information or information that we consider sensitive, like we wouldn't do it for passwords and stuff, right? But in this particular case, it was already being logged, right? And the ideal scenario of it not being logged would have like taken a longer time frame or duration to achieve, right? So this, this would have been the perfect goal right? But uh, a more tedious goal to achieve and will take more longer time. So uh, as per the concept of good enough is good enough, we went with the data masking bit and performed some sort of access control stuff so that developers get access to what they want to get access to and we protect what we want to protect, right? And the logging of sensitive information uh, can be like tackled eventually. 
now that we have solved for this problem it's not an immediate let's say uh, an issue a security or privacy issue right now so eventually the application can be converted or refactored into not logging the information in the first place so this can be an uh, 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 let's say an overtime goal uh, which obviously would take a longer period of time than just masking the data in the logs as we did right the other question being the original logs still have the pii how does like the, this particular solution that we just saw solve the problem for the original logs so as we saw uh, the logs, I mean, obviously one source definitely will contain those PIIs. The way we solved for this issue, this particular issue in our solution is by doing some sort of access control, right? Uh, the original logs are at this point cut off from the uh, like developers essentially, right? So they do not have access to the logs. They are, I mean, from wherever they're, the computes that they are running in, the logs get sent to log stash, right? And the developers do not have access to those computes either. So those logs come to uh, Logstash. Logstash is uh, where it gets manipulated and it's being sent to Elasticsearch slash Kibana for the UI bit, right? And that's the only place that the developers have access to, right? So that's where the developers get access to the logs too, uh, which they can use for debugging and other stuff that they want to do. So, uh, I mean, uh, the ideal solution again would be to like not log sensitive information in the first place in the logs itself, but uh, for now, the access based control thing and uh, again, the whole data masking bit is like the, a combination of the two essentially solve this problem that even though the original logs still have those PIIs, uh, we do not give access to the developers to those original source logs. So uh, in conclusion, we, we talked about information can become sensitive based on the context, right? So depending upon the context that you derive from, let's say your company regulations or some laws or whatever, different kinds of information can be considered sensitive. Uh, then we talked about Logstash, right? Logstash is essentially a tool that we can use to mutate slash filter logs uh, before we send it to wherever we want to send it to. It most popularly is Elasticsearch, obviously, but it could be any place at all. So Logstash is, is our go-to thing like for uh, mutating and changing the logs entries, essentially. The solution uh, that we came up with essentially enabled the developers to continue their work while we, we, the security folks, ensured privacy. The aim ideally is not to be a blocker, right? I mean, we want everyone to be able to do their jobs without each other, like any team being a blocker for each other. So yeah, I mean, that's the whole point, right? So thank you. Thank you folks listening to my talk. I'm Ayush. And if you have any further questions or you want to connect to me, you can uh, uh, hit me up on these social accounts that I have. Thanks. uh hey guys so uh, i guess that's the end of like all the talks right so uh, i'll just wrap it up in a way uh like there were there, there were a few questions that were answered i think uh, uh they were extended as well from the other speakers so the there were a few questions that were that were like asked to me last time that i gave this talk uh was the scalability the ease of implementation which i think has been tackled uh, right now as for the scale uh so Logstash, is one of those extensive applications uh, that requires a lot of compute and like resources uh, when you like deploy it. So yeah, as you scale, it does uh, get a little resource intensive. And uh, the thing is, uh, you can extend it further, like you can make it more complex by implementing regex patterns. But for the most part, and uh, what I did demonstrated in the talk as well, it was like a JSON entity. So uh, if you like know the exact keys or like the placement of those particular dictionary keys in that uh, log entry, you could like simplify the process a, a lot. And there's a few other benefits to like using Logstash in, uh, is, is the fact that it's like a central ingestion place. So you can have like multiple applications that are sending logs to Logstash and then they end up in Elasticsearch or some, wherever you want to like uh, send, send it uh, to at the end of it, right? So that, that allows you to like have configurability in a central place that can like extend to almost all of your applications uh, or like even files or systems or like any kind of thing that you can like send logs to uh, a log stash from, right? So that's a great thing, but uh, iterating on the fact that I believe it's not the like end or the perfect solution, like using the log stash thing, it might be a solution that bridges the gap towards eventual uh, code refactoring where you do not log those sensitive information because uh, at the end of the day uh, even if you're masking it it does ex exist in some place right and 
by i mean some people will always have access to that data so if uh, the the idea is if you refactor it it's lesser number of people that have access to that data for example uh, let's say a database admin will always have like the access to the production database for example but uh, uh, adding log stash on top of it some ops people might also right and uh, the thing is if you can like refactor the code then you are also reducing like, the attack surface that you could have like internally by not not having it in in uh, multiple places and just like one place centrally and again logstash is a great tool to like perform this masking operation some mutations on the logs that you want to like put in places but it it might just be okay for a little bit uh, but eventual goal should always be to like look for the proper optimal solution which is like making sure that your applications don't log uh, the actual log or sensitive information or pii uh and there were some questions uh, asked uh, i guess i'll just address them quickly so what are some major integrations with logstash so elastic search will be the one of the most popular ones but there's other ones also that you can like take uh, or ingest logs that are sent from logstash as well uh, you can check that I, i don't remember all of them right now but you can definitely like get that with the google search uh i was asked integrate uh, if i am integrating this with some saas or it software primarily what are those so uh we use the managed elastic search cluster that aws gives you which is now open search at this point but that's the one that we use the logstash uh, instance was deployed and like maintained by us uh, all the configurations and everything the integrate the elastic search part was maintained by aws that was a managed uh, cluster uh okay there's one more question which is do you use cryptography in the masking process or just hide it in the developer interface cool so uh, again there's there's no cryptography here uh, it's it's just replacing the value that we consider or deem sensitive with like a placeholder value uh, which is i mean it it could as my demo said like could be just a bunch of stars and say, says mask data or like anything at all it could be a generic let's say phone number or something but again there was no cryptography involved because uh, the end the place where the these masked logs end up is elastic search and the developers had access to those elastic search clusters and the log groups right so they would uh, only get the uh, the masked data it's it wasn't in a way that they could like get the original data as well because that that gap was built intentionally into the process where they get the logs at through elastic search so there was no like need for encrypting those values or like put in additional processing steps or like make it a little basically a uh, more complex uh, in the masking process i mean we could definitely like mask those values and then put let's say a hash or like the encrypted value for that sensitive information as well but uh, it's kind of unnecessary because uh, it just uses more computing power while uh, we could just achieve that with by replacing the value by like any generic uh, value otherwise right so in this particular case there was no cryptography used but uh, i mean people can argue that there are certain cases where you would use cryptography and i would definitely agree to that i mean that's why those certain plugins and hashing uh, filters also exist for logstash so you can definitely uh, encrypt it if your use case allow, allows for it or like needs it uh, creates a demand for it but it's a contextual thing depending upon your use case hi thanks ayush it was a good session Uh, I'm Rohan from Zyuda Tech. In our setup, we collect logs and ingest them into a pretty much standard out of the box setup of PLK with some minor configuration changes for scaling up. Due to our regulatory obligations, we need to have specific retention policies for storing logs. These could include access logs as well as application logs, which are usually ingested from various multiple instances of our internal apps. we apply masking on critically sensitive data such as application access tokens which can be used to gain temporary access to the system due to reasons such as regular audits by regular ter appointed system auditors we are subject to storing logs without masking certain personally identifiable information or user identifiers this is needed to provide audit trails for the auditor to review as well as handle and respond to user complaints for example to the exchanges we therefore store data as per the regulations but on the ui as well as at the application level we 
master data for example our api responses which are then displayed to the outside world i think it is indeed a sensible choice to follow the suggestions given by you as you mentioned it is not that difficult to implement either and it should be adopted as a best practice by other organizations as well uh thanks again for this informative session thank you